Okay, we are back out at Lone Mountain and have added some functionality to this little device. So now we're using multiple buttons. As you can see, this is a uh, data screen. You can change that uh, setting there. You can also pop over to the map, pop back over. And then when we're on the map, we can still cycle through our waypoints here. Let's hop back over to this screen. From this screen, we can start recording our track. And as you can see, we got a little light. And while it's recording, we can hop back over. So what we're gonna do in this video is just record the track, and then we're gonna open that up in the software and uh, take a look at what we got. And Jen's back to help me uh, carry the little GPS device. So the way this is gonna work is uh, when it's set to 5S, that means every five seconds, it's gonna log the data. If it's here, it's every 15 seconds, 25 seconds, 35 seconds. And the reason I did that is because the faster you move, you need more data. So it, uh, there's better resolution on your track. And the slower you move, you can record it a little bit slower. But for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna record it five seconds. That way we got lots of data to play with. So let's go walk around. There we go, recording on 006. Let's go. So Jen just started her own YouTube channel, so I'll drop that link down in the description if you guys want to check it out. But uh, this was just a quick little half mile loop that we did here, um, recording this track. Like I mentioned in part one, this is not exactly a beginner friendly Arduino project, but you know, if you copy and paste the code and if you wire everything up like the diagram, it's gonna work and uh, you can give it a shot. So just a quick look at the hardware again. So we're using uh, this module now and we add an extra button uh, to this test in part two. The micro SD card is just connected to uh, the SPI interface just right here on these pins. I'll have the wiring diagram on GitHub. But uh, I just wanted to note something. Hang on, let me pull this off real quick. So just a quick note on these uh, SD card readers. These, uh, these run on 3.3 volts. So when using a 5 volt Arduino, like the Mega, you uh, need this all this little circuitry here to step the voltage down to the card reader, but uh, let me click this back. Right, let's just uh, click that guy out and let's go read the file on the computer. All right, let's pull up this SD card. So if you remember, the uh, file was 006.txt, so let's just copy this. And we're gonna put it in our folder with all our files here. Uh, this folder here is uh, pretty much the exact same files that will be on GitHub here. I'll have the link down in the description. But uh, let's hop into the folder here. So as you can see, this is the same exact folder. Oops. Same folder. Uh, let's make sure. Oh yeah, we're still running. Got our environment running. So we're gonna run Python, create GPX. And the way this works is I, uh, I'll just scroll down real quick. Or here, I'll just do a dash H, which is a uh, help. I have arg parser running, as you can see over here, and that will give us uh, some info on how to use this file. So what we're gonna do is put 006, you don't have to put the extension, uh, the Python script's gonna manage all that. And um, that's gonna start converting this to a GPX file. Uh, if we do a dash M, like, let's see. If we do something like this, let's just run this. There we go. So that generated an HTML file and a GPX file. The HTML file is over here on Folium. Uh, it's a pretty cool uh, little Python extension that you can uh, add on and generate maps with. So this is the track that we walked. Looks exactly like the one that we walked. Pretty sweet. And I like how you can uh, you can zoom in, zoom out, and all that. This little mountain here in Las Vegas. See the whole world. Whoa, that's crazy. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, we're getting crazy over here. Okay, let's close all this. Hop back into the file here. Let's take a look at uh, what that data looks like. So here you see coming out of the Arduino, this is what we're writing. Uh, we're writing every line uh, five seconds apart from each other. So latitude, longitude, I have all of these separated by commas. And then within that, I have uh, this little separator. Uh, I don't know what this character is called, but uh, up here in the top of the script, I. Uh, split the data, the comma separated values, and then I split those with the 
whatever this thing is. Maybe you can let me know in the comments. Whoa, why does it look like it's selected now? Oh, look at this. Key separator. This is cool. I never realized that uh, GitHub does this. Like, you can actually, like, examine the code. And it gives you this cool, like, function layout. So, let's hop down to the bottom. So, we're going to hop down to the bottom here. So, this is where we... Now it's going crazy. There we go. Uh, this is where we uh, type in that text with a 006. Uh, if we do a dash M. Hey, right, stop doing that. If we do a dash M, uh, that's when it generates the map. All that logic's down here. I didn't do much error handling and exception handling and stuff. Just enough to uh, get this thing running and not throwing too many crazy uh, errors or anything. But it checks to see if the file exists. Uh, it checks to see if you have the dash M um, flag. And then... Um, and it runs through and does all its magic. Basically creates this little class, the class I wrote, it creates this object, and then it just does a lot of stuff on that object and creates your GPX file. So like the GPX file, so let's just word wrap this. So as you can see, it uses uh, this template here, and um, I basically would do a dot format and uh, put those variables into here. And it generates this guy. No, oh, gotta word wrap that again. This guy here using uh, all the data and all those track points. This is the HTML file that Folium generates. So yeah, pretty cool. I'm not gonna go to uh, go through the code too much in this video. A lot of the a lot of the Arduino code is pretty much the same. Uh, the only thing that I really wanted to go over is um, this button class up in the top, uh, basically handling the short press and long press for two separate buttons. But the way that this code is written is modular enough to uh, handle a lot of buttons and not have a lot of duplicate code. So what this uh, code is doing is it's creating an object of the easy button object. And then its attributes are just going to be the long press and the short press. And uh, those are going to have a, a callback function for each one. So when you instantiate each button down here, you basically pass it the uh, names of those functions. And now let's scroll down to those right now. Down here. So when you write these functions, you can just put the logic in that you want the functions to, uh, to handle. So as you can see here, we don't have any duplicate code at all. It's actually pretty nice. Uh, I'm pretty proud of myself for this one. <laughs> took me a little while to figure this out, but once I figured it out, it looked really good. But uh, anyway, you should always strive to write code like that, where it's uh, modular like this. You don't have to. If I didn't do that, we'd have to copy and paste a lot of the stuff, and it would just it would just be a lot of uh, code. If we ever had to change anything or we didn't like something, we'd have to change it in four different places instead of just one place. You know what I mean? So here, this is like if you hold the button for one second, it's going to do the long press, or anything under one second, it's going to do the short press. Uh, everything else, pretty much the same. Um, a lot of string handling. Let me scroll to the bottom here. So a lot of string stuff here that to, to write out to the SD card, and also uh, it goes over serial if you want. And um, we're taking a, a little bit more data out of the GPS, so like the altitude and the date and the time, and we're just uh, formatting that the way we want to write it to the SD card. Uh, the way that it handles the files. So here, let me get back out of here. I don't need that anymore. Let's go to the SD card. So the way it's handling the files is it counts how many files are on the uh, SD card and then so if it were to start recording now it would start at 007.txt because uh, it counts this as the first file because I leave this on here this is that JSON file which uh, we're gonna work with in the next video so that we don't have to hard code let me hop back here so that we don't have to hard code these uh, these latitude and longitudes so yeah guys uh, all the source code here do whatever you want with it uh, if you uh, has some coding knowledge like you'll understand this stuff a lot more uh, if you don't and you copy and paste it it's gonna work just fine just one more thing to mention the uh dependencies for the python program is just gp or geopy gpx pi and folium uh, if we go back out here that's all on the uh, pip file i don't know if you use pip env but if you use pip env you can just do pip env install and it will use this file build your dependencies here uh for the arduino this one has a little bit more. So tiny GPS plus plus. I'm using uh, that I2C display that I showed you in uh, part one. Easy button, easy buzzer. And I think the rest are built in. Yep, this is built. Those two are built in and that's built in. Uh, but uh, looking at this 
this bit of code here this is what we're going to be doing uh implementing into the program in the next part of the video um let me hop back into finder holy smokes got a lot of stuff over here okay so this basically this format this json what we're going to do is uh read in the uh sd card and then build an array with this array so as you can see num rows here it's going to take array length which is uh right here so that's going to have eight and then coordinates doc coordinates is going to just take in all of these here and build a coordinate uh build an array inside the arduino code so yeah if you're uh, not subscribed make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that one and uh i think i may make a part four where i um put together a little enclosure for this thing and maybe we'll take it hiking on like an actual hike instead of uh just a little half mile thing around lone mountain so yeah anyway i'll uh see you in the next one thanks for watching